the harvest. The South Texas sun never cast its shadows on my little patch of land in the summer, but I certainly felt one over me now. I stood at the end of the dirt drive, holding a letter from the bank, stating that they would be seizing my farm in 90 days unless I could pay what I owed them. $27,000. Nausea washed over me in a wave. I felt as if the eggs I had for breakfast were on their way back up. The farm had been given to me by my grandfather, but it came with some back taxes and debt. My late husband, Ben, had always been the breadwinner, and we were chipping away at the payments until he had a heart attack and passed away last year. I was making money where I could, and hoping I had more time to get ahead, but it seemed time wasn't on my side. I grabbed a bottle of wine from the house and sat in the clover, staring out into the corn. I racked my brain the entire afternoon, desperate for options and praying for solutions. But when none came, I daydreamed of being a kid again playing in the dirt with my pigtails and rain boots. My papa laughing and scooping me up into his lap. Did you know there was magic in the soil here? He'd ask, his nose crinkling with delight. No, I didn't, papa. Well, there is. You can ask the corn for whatever you need, and it'll be given to you. I hung on every word. He was my hero, and I had believed everything he said. I remembered it just like it was yesterday. How he'd gone into detail about how to ask the corn for what you needed. I chuckled about it now, and maybe it was the wine talking, but I thought I'd indulge the memory of him and make a request. I stood at the edge of the field and pulled a knife from my pocket. Please, give me the money. I need to keep the farm. I felt so silly. I could feel my cheeks flush red. But I went ahead and pricked my thumb with the knife. Placing my hand between the first row of stalks, I squeezed a few drops of blood onto the soil. I don't know what I expected to happen, really. Nothing, I guess. But it would have been nice if a sack of money dropped from the sky. The sun was getting low, and a few stars were starting to gleam above me. I chuckled once more and headed inside for the evening. That night, I dreamt of being little again, running through the fields without a care in the world. The next morning, I set out to do my chores, coffee cup in hand. Feed the chickens, collect the eggs, and tend to the garden. I had just stood up from picking weeds from around the squash when something caught my eye. There was a single bent corn stalk hanging into the yard, and a piece of paper was sticking out of the cob. I walked over and broke the cob from the stalk and peeled back the husk. My mouth fell open, shocked to find that there was no corn in the husk, but instead a roll of $100 bills. I peeled another one from the stock next to it. More money. I laughed and then cried as I peeled more and more husks. I spent the rest of the morning harvesting until I found corn again instead of cash. Sitting on the ground, I counted the money. $27,002. The exact amount I owed to the bank. I wept with joy the entire drive to the bank to settle my debt. They raised a brow at the large sum of money I brought in, but it was easy to explain. Plenty of rural farmers saved their money in a safe instead of depositing it, a paranoia carried down since the Great Depression. Once I got back to the farm, I thanked my papa in heaven and thanked the field. I couldn't believe it, but there really was magic in the soil. Remember, Annie, only ask for the things you really need. Otherwise, the corn might give you more than you bargained for.
I heeded his words and ran through the list of things I'd been unable to fix or buy. Necessities only. By the end of the month, I had scabs on each of my fingers, but I also had a new truck, dishwasher, and a dairy cow I named Mabel. I plopped into the lawn chair, counting my blessings as the sun set on a beautiful Sunday evening. Everything was looking up. I only wish Ben had been here to see it. Well, maybe he could be. I sat up straight and my heart began to race at the thought. Could the corn bring my husband back? And if it could, is it really a need? It sure felt like one. My heart ached for him every single day. Did I dare ask for him? I didn't know if that would be a good idea or not. Or even if it was possible. A week ago, I would have said no. But the field had already given me something living before with the dairy cow. I debated for a long time, considering the moral implications of it. In the end, my heartache won out and I stood at the edge of the corn once more. I'm not sure if you can, but, but if you can, please bring my husband back to me. I cut across the palm of my hand with the knife. It hurt like hell, but I felt like this request required more blood. That night, I lay wide awake in bed, fiddling with the bandana I tied around my hand. Would Ben come back? And if he did, would he be the same? I wasn't sure, but the image of him standing in the corn tomorrow created butterflies in my stomach. Somehow, I eventually drifted off. No dreams this time. The noise of glass shattering ripped me from my sleep. I sat up in bed, heart pounding in my throat. Another clamor came from the kitchen, and I was on my feet. I grabbed my robe from the rocking chair and wrapped it over my nightgown. There was silence as I crept down the hall. The kitchen light was on, and I'm sure I hadn't left it on last night. I peeked around the corner and saw that a few dishes were broken and scattered across the hardwood floor. Muddy boot prints led from the back door to the living room. The idea that it could be Ben made me go weak in the knees, but then an image of him pulling himself out of the grave, decomposing flesh hanging from bone, made a shiver go down my spine. The noise of glass shattering ripped me from my sleep. I sat up in bed, heart pounding in my throat. Another clamor came from the kitchen and I was on my feet. I grabbed my robe from the rocking chair and wrapped it over my nightgown. There was silence as I crept down the hall. The kitchen light was on, and I'm sure I hadn't left it on last night. I peeked around the corner and saw that a few dishes were broken and scattered across the hardwood floor. Muddy boot prints led from the back door to the living room. The idea that it could be Ben made me go weak in the knees. But then the image of him pulling himself out of the grave, decomposing flesh hanging from the bone, made a shiver go down my spine. I tiptoed into the living room, afraid and full of excitement at the same time. And there he was. I couldn't believe it, but there was my husband sitting in his recliner, staring at the wall. Ben! I screamed, running into his arms. He wasn't a horrifying corpse. He looked just how I had remembered him. I sobbed into his chest and squeezed him as hard as I could. I pulled back and kissed him all over his face. Annie, he said, his eyes full of confusion. Yes, what is it, baby? How am I here? It doesn't matter, honey. You're here now. Everything's going to be just fine. I smoothed his hair with my hand, tears still streaming down my face. I'm sorry about the dishes. It's okay, don't worry about that. Come on, I'll make you some breakfast. 
We cleaned up the kitchen together, and I made him eggs and bacon. I watched in pure bliss as he scarfed them down. We spent the rest of the day just walking around the farm, talking about everything and anything. I filled him in on everything he'd missed. At first, he seemed out of it, confused, but by the end of the day, he was laughing and carrying on as he had always had. The next couple of weeks flew by, and they were the best days of my life. Ben was the old Ben again, for the most part. Sometimes I would catch him staring off into nothingness, though, his face twitching as if he was reliving something. I'd touch his shoulder, and he'd snap out of it, so I didn't question it. The sun was setting over the cornfield as we held hands watching the lightning bugs drift lazily through the air. Ben was especially quiet, contemplative even, but I figured he must have just been tired from repairing fence all afternoon. Annie? Yes, honey. Do you want to know where we go when we die? His face was solemn, his eyes changed to a depth I'd never seen on him before. What? what? My mouth went dry. I have to go back there soon. No, you don't. I, I asked the corn for you, and it gave you back to me. I know, Annie, but you shouldn't have. He turned to look over the field. What do you mean? My mind raced. I didn't understand. I can take you there, you know. Take me where, Ben? To the place beyond life. There's a doorway in the cornfield. That's why it's magic. Ben, you're scaring me. I let go of his hand and took a couple of steps away from him. You owe them a debt now. They will come for you. I can't protect you from them. I came back so I could bring you with me before they come. Who is they? I backed away even further. They are the ones who harvest. We are the ones who sow. He was looking at me now. His eyes, they were different. Like something cold. A, a void. But there was sadness in them too. Then, I have to go now back through the door. You should come with me. It will be easier for you if you come with me. I stormed up to him, my fear overtaken by anger, and struck his cheek with my open hand. You will not leave me again, Benjamin Wallen. Do you hear me? I pushed away from his arms and pounded my fists into his chest, but finally melted against him and wept. I have to go, he repeated. Damn you, Ben. I choked. You should come. I'm not going anywhere. He let go of me and walked to the edge of the corn, pausing to look over his shoulder. I love you, Annie. Always have. He disappeared into the stalks before I could respond. I shambled inside and collapsed on the couch and mourned him all over again. The sun seeped through the blinds and the warmth on my face woke me. I looked at the clock on the wall and it read 10.17 a.m. I couldn't remember the last time I had slept this late. For a moment I had forgotten, but then I remembered what had happened last night and a pang of sorrow struck my stomach. I muscled my way through the feeling, determined not to fall apart again. I made my way into the kitchen and started a pot of coffee. I poured some in the cup before it was done brewing and headed to the front windows, throwing open the drapes. Oh my god. The coffee cup shattered on the floor as I brought my hands to my mouth. The corn, it was... everywhere. The cornfield stretched as far as the eye could see. I ran to each window in the house, opening blinds, ripping drapes off railing. More cornfields. The corn had taken over the land on every side of the house. I grabbed the phone from the wall receiver. 
but didn't know who to call. My father? The police? And tell them what? The cornfield had overtaken hundreds of acres overnight? Just then, a piercing shriek came from the field, causing me to drop the phone. I instinctively crouched down on all fours and crawled back to the bay windows. I slid up the wall and made a cross over my chest, as I'd learned in Sunday Mass as a kid. I dared to peek out the window, making my body as small as possible at the corner of it. Something was in the corn. Stalks bent to the side at the weight of something traveling within them. It moved impossibly fast. I hid behind the wall, my breath ragged and my lips quivered. I could hear it huffing and growling. It was close to the house now. Then there was a series of clicks and grunts. And a second grunt responded on the other side of the house. Two of them. Suddenly, there was a rush of air, then a heavy thud on the roof. I wanted to scream, but held my palm firmly over my mouth. It crawled across the tin roof, still communicating to the other one on the ground. I thought of the shotgun, but it was upstairs in the guest bedroom. Up there, with that thing. A window shattered. It was in the house now. The floorboards creaked above me. It was getting closer and closer to the stairs. I needed to run. And I needed to run now. But I was frozen in terror, like a rabbit in a hole as the coyote dug up its meal. A low, guttural growl erupted from the top of the staircase. Finally coming to my senses, I bolted for the kitchen door and flung it open, sprinting as fast as I could through the corn. I could hear whatever it was cry out, shrieking and then giving chase. Corn leaves whipped across my face as I flew faster than I ever had. The speed of them, though, was unbelievable. I could hear them gaining on me. You owe them a debt now. They will come for you. The thought rang out above the terror in my mind. I pumped my legs harder against the ground, but it seemed as if the soil was grabbing at the soles of my feet, slowing me down. A humming came from ahead, like a great vibration. It grew louder and louder. I ran towards it mindlessly, somehow thinking it could save me. They were so close now. I could almost feel a hot breath on the back of my shoulders. Just before I felt like they had me, I came into a clearing. A perfect circle in the corn. I stopped and spun around, gasping for air. A howl came from just outside the circle. I couldn't see them, but they began to pace the perimeter, shaking the tassels at the tops of the stalks. I turned back to the clearing, and at the center of the circle was a door. It gave off a glow, and the hum from the vibration was so loud now, it almost rattled my teeth. For some reason, I was drawn to it. My breathing slowed, and my body felt weightless. It was pulling me in with some invisible force. My feet betrayed my fear and took me to the door.
placed my hand on the golden knob, and the vibration consumed me. I could no longer hear the snarls of the beasts in the corn. Any trepidation I had melted away. There's a doorway in the cornfield. You should come with me. I turned the knob and opened the door. I gasped as I was enveloped by an overwhelming, brilliant light. A very big thank you to Papa Mishka 89 for allowing me to narrate the story. I hope you found it as riveting as I did. If you would like to hear more of my narrations, please feel free to like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Now, my little gals and goblins, until next time, good night. <laughs>